didn't know it was a game. So I had to tell you what the um, I thought we had a better second half, obviously, than we did the first half. But um, right now, we're not worrying about the score. We're not looking uh, at the score. We're just concerned with how we're playing. And then, obviously, we'll look at the score at the end of the game. But I think if you take it half by half, we uh, we got settled into more of our game plan in the second half uh, than the first half. We were adjusting to the game more so than settling into our game plan. And once we settled into our game plan, uh, uh, we were fine. What was kind of the game plan? Was it just what the, you know, choose as many threes as you can type thing? Or um, I think that the way that they defend, uh, they flood the side of the floor. They want to keep you pinned on one side of the floor. So obviously, uh, they give up a lot of threes um, by doing that, and they're okay with that. Obviously, they want to make you take low percentage shots and high percentage shots, and uh, we knew that they would try to obviously take away Oscar's uh, looks because he just had a video game. And so uh, we knew that they would concentrate on obviously flooding the block, flooding the painted area. They wanted to rotate from the baseline. Um, on drives and or on post-ups with double teams. And so Oscar did an unbelievable job with just making uh, passes out of the post, which necessarily didn't lead into a score, but more got the ball moving and hopping, more hockey assists in terms of him getting rid of it early. But, um, I mean, we shot more threes than we would normally want to shoot. We shot like 30-some threes, but obviously we made 11, so it's not that bad. We can shoot threes. We can play that way if we need to because we have – uh, good shooters. I think that we're still one of the teams at the top of the conference in three-point shooting percentage. Obviously, we don't take as many as a lot of other teams because we have a guy that we can throw it inside to. And so um, we knew that they would kind of key in on Oscar. We knew that the three-point shot would be there. We didn't want to live by it. We just wanted to like it a little bit. And we love we loved the rim. And so, but it, the game dictated where we had to take a few more threes. I think so. I think that uh, the dynamics of our team, that we can win a game, whether it's in the 80s, whether it's in the 70s, the 60s, or whatever the case may be. And I think that that's been more of an adjustment for us. Uh, before, uh, we kind of wanted to live in the 80s, but I think that we've learned our team and we've settled into just uh, whatever the game takes, we'll take it, whether it's a Low possession game, whether it's a high possession game, we can play either way. And so we've uh, kind of slowed our pace down a little bit in terms of executing, but we still want to get easy baskets. We still want to play fast when those opportunities come. But we want to be a better executing team, and we've kind of worked really hard on executing. As you see last game, how well the ball moved. There was some energy behind the ball. We got the ball from the first side to the second side, so we call the money side to the third side a few times in that game. And whether we hit or miss those shots, the percentages of shooting percentage, it goes from 36% of the first side. That means if you shoot with one pass or no pass to 40 some percent on the second side to 63% on the third side. So not often times that we get it to the money side, but we want to get it to the money side. That's something that we've been focusing on lately. You mentioned that Oscar had some of his offensive looks taken away against a and but still wasn't able to do Oscar is all about winning. It doesn't matter. He, he was the happiest dude on the floor, as you can see, when, when he was moving in and guys getting open shots. He loved it when those guys make open shots. I think he understands that if they're doing that, it's hard to double team him and it's hard to take him away as much if we got guys that are making shots. Um, but him rebounding, that's just what who he is. That's just what he does. I don't care. Because sometimes guys illegally block him out. They turn and face guard him and put two hands in him and two and three guys. That's illegally. You can't do that. Um, and unfortunately, they don't call that enough. And that's okay. But he's still unstoppable in that because that's just what he does. Like You're, you're not going to stop him from getting a rebound. He has a a nose for the ball, you know, and he, he's going to rebound at a high level. What made you? What made you think that? <laughs> Just a guess. But it seemed like the team 
flipped the switch, what, what changed with them in that game? You mean before that game or that game? That's after that game, during that game. Go well, there were some things that happened internally before that game with our team. And so uh, we had a uh, we had a couple team meetings prior to that game. And uh, there was some come to Jesus talks, I guess you could say, prior to that game. And so uh, those things put our team in a different mindset. And. Those teams, those those things. I'm sorry, uh, got our guys to to realize how much they need each other, how well they need to play for one another, and how well they needed to put all the pride to, aside and to keep the main thing the main thing. And that's that's us winning Kentucky basketball, winning, and everybody eats. And so uh, I think there were some things that happened before that game that gave us what we're doing right now. Jacob seems to be doing well. Is that kind of part of his attacks? Has that been a contributing factor to you guys turning things around? Is he not trying to cope with that? Um, I think that us having a solid Jacob, he doesn't have to average 20 points a game as he did in two of the games uh, that he did. I think that's just having a sound, solid Jacob Topman gives us a better chance to win. We need him to be good. And one of the things that I always say to our guys is, is if everyone is good, no one has to be great. So we have that type of team that if everyone is good, no one player has to be great. So like even last game, like we had a bunch of guys that were good and Oscar wasn't great. We don't need for everybody to be great. We just need for everybody to be good. So if all of our players are good, we'll be good. What can you tell us about Vanderbilt? Vanderbilt's playing really good right now. Um, a little different than what they were last year. They had, obviously, a dynamic score in Scottie Pippen Jr. They play more together, uh, very systemic. A lot of their offense comes off of their system, off of the actions that they run. They do a great job of creating uh, shots for their team. They have a ton of shooters. At one point on the floor, they're going to have five guys that shoot threes, which is going to be a challenge for us. Um, they run a a lot of misdirection stuff, comeback actions to get those shots, and we got to be attentive. We can't fall asleep. We can't rest or relax because they're constantly moving, constantly screening, constantly putting you in misdirection action so they can get an open shot. So we got to really be attentive to our defensive schemes and try to take away the three. Um, we hear that they may be down a couple players, but that's really not the concern. We just got to make sure that we're doing our job in terms of keeping those guys in check and, and keeping them, limiting them from the three-point line. It was after the, the Tennessee game, you and, and Cal and Ocho went up to, to Hoopo and into what it felt with the 23 kids that were coming in. Just what struck you from, from watching some of the future off that snap? They're all pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to see them play, uh, and it was a, it was like kind of a spur of the moment thing after we, we – we won at Tennessee. We knew that they were playing. Coach O and I had talked about him going one day, and then I'm going. I, I went, was going to go the other day, and then we just all decided to go at the same time after that game to see our see our kids. And we were able to see uh, DJ Aaron, and we were able to see uh, Justin, and we were able to see Reed. And uh, they're all pretty special in their own way. There's a lot of good things that they all do that will probably complement each other really well. And so um, to see guys that you, you're excited about coaching and to see where you can take them and see what they're doing and see what they add and what they bring to the table is exciting. Um, so it was a good opportunity for us to get away and see those guys, but we, we got to stay in the moment with what we're doing right now as a basketball team. Jim, where have you seen Antonio take the biggest strides in this game? Over Just pace. His pace is a little different. He's not playing sporadic. He's not – playing in a rush. You can be quick, but not in a rush. And I think that he's uh, not hunting. He's allowing for place to find him instead of him hunting. Because when you're hunting all the time, you're playing really fast. Like you're trying to get it all in one swing of the bat. And I've been talking to him about sometimes you got to go up the bat and hit a base hit or sacrifice fly, you know, and you don't have to hit a home run every time you're up the bat. So I think the pace and how he's playing right now is kind of slowed down for him. And it's making him a much better player for us. How important is Sabir for this team moving forward? Because you 
board, whether it's off the Very important. Or Very important. Like for us to reach the heights that we're capable of reaching, we probably more than not know that we need, again, a good Savir. If everyone is good, no one player has to be great. And so we know that we need Savir to be good for us. Um, and he will be. I mean, there's a long season. Uh, he's not out. I mean, we, we I think our, our staff, our players, everyone knows how how much uh, we need Savir. I think that um, he understands that and his he'll he but he's he's he too, like he's yeah, you know, he he's happy with the way that the other guys are playing and, and as long as they're playing good and as long as and as long as we're winning, he's okay with that. But he's still he's still a big part of what we're doing and that's not gonna that's not gonna change.